Okay, as noted above, many income statements use different terminology and show other items. They may break down the line items we've mentioned into smaller components. Check with your accountant about the finer details you may need on your own company's income statement. Then too, some companies focus on numbers that are derived from the income statement but aren't necessarily shown on it. For example, some track a measure called known as EBIDTDA, which is an unwieldy wieldly acronym for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. EBITDA is typically figured by taking operating income and adding back depreciation and amortization. So Ho's equipment EBITDA during the first year was five thousand. That's it. Negative sixteen thousand dollars. It's negative five thousand. That's it. Negative sixteen thousand dollars in operating income plus eleven thousand dollars in depreciation and amortization. EBITDA is a popular measure among communications and entertainment companies, which must build complete networks and infrastructures before they begin to generate revenue. In their early years, therefore, net profit is nearly always negative. Focusing on this allows management to concentrate on current revenues and expenses. No matter what your income statement looks like, always remember it has very little to do with cash actually going in and out the door. Sales, for example, are often called revenues, but the numbers don't show you how much cash flowed into your bank account. And CGOS or COS shows the cost of what you sold as best as accountants can figure them. But those lines don't tell you what cost you actually wrote checks for during the time period in question. Depreciation is just a number. Accountants call it a non-cash charge. Remember the florist who bought the company or bought the truck for $25,000? The actual $25,000 purchase price may have been paid off long ago, or the florist may be paying it off in installments, but the depreciation expense will be determined by accounting rules for depreciating trucks, which are based on reasonable estimates of a truck's useful life, not by the amount of cash actually being laid out. It's the same with all other items, right down to the income tax expense. That income taxes line makes it look as if you're set it, setting the money aside for the government, right? But nobody has actually taken any cash and put it into a separate bank account marked taxes and nobody has paid the government any money until the checks are actually mailed the fact is the income statement is an abstraction it's a useful abstraction it's a useful abstraction because it answers that important question we pose at the beginning of this chapter it shows you whether you're making money on the goods or services you provide once you have taken all your costs and expenses into account but it isn't real it doesn't show how much cash you put in your bank account or how much cash you spent or used. In fact, if your company is growing fast, you may be building up inventory, buying new machinery, opening up new branches, and in general, using a whole lot more cash than you were generating. Your income statement may show that your company is highly profitable, and all the while you might be running out of C-A-S-H. You want to say that out loud. There's no another downside to accrual-based income statements. They provide a huge opportunity for what you might call creative accounting. Accounts are required to use a code of rules known as Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, or GAAP. The logic behind GAAP is reasonableness. The rules must make sense. Even so, there are many rules within GAAP for treating depreciation, inventory, and so on. So to a limited extent, accountants can choose how they calculate depreciation. They can select one or another method of valuing inventory. They can insert revenues for warranty costs, bad debt, and other eventualities, or not. They can record sales differently, depending on the likelihood returns for credit. All such moves can be perfectly legal and perfectly consistent with accounting standards, but they will make the bottom line of the income statement look very different, depending on which tactics the accountant chooses. This is known as the gap in the gap. Unless you're financially sophisticated, you can be fooled by clever accounting. And if you run your own business, what you really want to know isn't just the bottom line on the income statement, which is, which is subject to all these accountants manipulations, but also how much cash is actually flowing in and out of your bank account. That brings us to the next subject, cash flow. And that concludes chapter three of managing by the numbers. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next chapter. Bye.